Welcome to the worldwide free seminar of the Family Dog Project, live from Budapest. The event is proudly sponsored by Purina. As the slide shows also, with the participants from Hungary, of course we had participants in Brazil too in this study, uh, researching dog barks is a multi-generation project already at the Department of Ethology because me as a senior researcher on this topic and uh, my very sweet colleague Tomás Farago is already a seasoned researcher and the newest generation Nicolette Zinege also joined to this research so we can say that we are dealing with dog barks since a long time and uh, this Hungarian group of ethologists put a lot of new in, uh, knowledge on the table of science about dog barks. Dog barks are <clears throat> one of the most typical characteristic of this species and uh, there are lots of interesting questions about what to research on dog barks and uh, we know a lot about actually dog barks. For example, we know that humans can decipher information uh, carried in dog barks very accurately regarding the context or the emotions behind dog barks. So although in both pictures we can see some kind of chase in this case, but if we would hear the barks what these dogs emit meanwhile, then we would be very possibly able to tell that one is a playful dog, the other is an aggressive dog. One is a playful context, the other is a fight context. Also, we know that almost everybody is a bark expert. So you do not need a special training to understand what dog barks tell to you. Because dog owners, and very interestingly, those people who don't own a dog, can also tell very accurately what is dog barking about. And as you go, adults, children, and even blind people who truly didn't see in their life a dog, they are really good in deciphering dog barks. Furthermore, we know that dog barks are also informative for other dogs. Big surprise there. But actually, till the very last years, nobody did a field experiment on how dogs react to other dogs' bark. Now we know that dogs can make a difference based on the bark, between other dog individuals and also other contexts. So why, why I am here anymore? Obviously we know everything about dog barks or probably not. About three weeks ago I did a Google search and I was looking for the search term dog barking. And not counting the downloadable dog bark sounds to your mobile phone, the 10 first relevant uh, hits on dog bark, for my biggest sadness, for example, did not contain any about our research. But all the 10 other was about how to stop dogs barking, how to eliminate dog barking, or my personal favorite, the hell of living next to a dog that won't stop barking. So obviously dog barks can be a problem. Uh, we meet with the phenomenon, what is called nuisance bark, and this is a serious thing. I mean, people get into almost physical fights, but definitely legal fights over excessive dog barking, and it can go on till the uh, even removal of the dog from the given uh, neighborhood. For example, this little note was inserted to a uh, post box in India where somebody was so annoyed by the neighbor's dog barking that uh, started to make such noises, for example, firecrackers and so on, which technically tortured the dog to bark even more. So it was a personal vendetta on dog barking. Therefore, 
we have to realize that excessive dog barking is a worldwide problem and this is a major part of noise pollution. Now we could talk about that, what is exactly noise? Obviously, for noise, there are lots of definitions, usually technical or I would say abiotic ones. For example, this very nice one uh, from Miller back in the 1970s, which is irrelevant or excessive sound is undesirable and therefore it's a noise. You can list road traffic, music, loud music, uh, machines, uh, construction work. So usually some kind of abiotic feature like intensity, monotony, I mean loudness, uh, too much sound and so on and so on, which can be considered as noise. Of course there are problems with defining noise also. Uh, as Miller himself continues on, basically noise can be a kind of consensus in a given group of people. It's not very clear cut what is noise many times. I just tell one uh, exemplar from my own uh, life when I was very happy to find a second world war air raid siren uh, on the flea market and I took it home, I immediately tried it. And as I tried it, my parents, who were uh, obviously little children during Second World War, immediately came out and immediately forbade me any more happiness with this siren because it didn't awake nice memories from them. So the so-called siren effect is true for noise too. There are uh, people for whom, or situations, when a sound can be very useful and warning, and at the same time, the same sound can be an awful noise. What can the biologist tell about it? I would like to introduce a new theory, which is basically focuses on the communicative relevance of particular sounds, making them as noise. Because there are biological sounds, very well known sounds, for example, baby cries, which are obviously useful sounds because elicit care taking, caregiving behavior from the adults. But at the same time, we know exactly from research that baby cries are basically the most annoying sounds what people can hear, uh, obviously biological sounds. We cannot habituate it to baby cries. And we hypothesize that dog barks may do something similar. Dog barks may evoke awareness, but when we cannot react, they may become a stressful nuisance. Now how to test this? Obviously, in this experiment, what I am talking about here, we did a playback experiment, so people had to listen to particular uh, dog bark sounds, and we had the following questions. We wanted to know whether the acoustic setup, so how that bark sounds, has something to do with the nuisance effect. We wanted to know that whether that inner state or mood what people think the given dog is in has something to do with the nuisance effect. And we had the last question, whether, for example, men or women, or women react more uh, stronger to annoying barks. It was a parallel study in Brazil and Hungary. So Brazilian and Hungarian university students were the subjects, 50-50 in ratio of men and women, and altogether 160 subjects. We constructed bark samples from natural bark, individual barks, based on three acoustic features. The pitch, the tonality, and the pulse, I mean how fast is the bark, was varied in these sequences, so there were from each category three kinds, low, medium and high level. So from this, three times three times three, is 27 kinds of dog barks. I hope that I can show the two extremes. So for example, if I can play this. This is a high-pitched, uh, slow pulsing and very clear, clean sound. And on the other hand, here is one. Uh, 
which is the other extreme, harsh, fast and deep. So people had to listen to these sound samples and they had to rate them. What they had to do? They had to tell with a question sheet the dog's inner state on five scales and also how annoying was this bark. So they simply had to put lines on the sheet and as if it was for example a more aggressive sound they would put the line here. If it would be a, like this is a less fearful sound for example the line is closer to the left end on the paper and at the end we simply just measure the millimeter the distance of these lines and this gave a very accurate answer mm -hmm. of their uh, opinion about the given bark. Let's see the results. Firstly, we didn't find difference between Hungary or Brazil, how the people uh, decided upon these barks. So we could say that barking is kind of universal language. People think the same about dogs and dog barks when they hear this sound. Right to the main question, which was the most annoying dog bark? We have to say that the foremost and most st strongest feature what makes a dog bark annoying is the high pitch. So I can show a typically very annoying dog bark. These kind of sounds absolutely annoy people. At the other hand, a very different type of bark also makes us annoyed. These are deep sounds, but they are fast and harsh. So we can see on the graph also that independently from the harshness or independently of the pulse, the high-pitched sounds are high on the nuisance level and also the deep, the low-pitched sounds, if they are fast and if they are harsh, they also annoy us quite well. What is with the dog's emotional state? In a nutshell, we can say that if we think that a dog is some kind of negative emotional state, we think that this barking is annoying. At the same time, if the dog is in some kind of positive inner state, by your opinion, we think that the sound is less annoying. There is an interesting U-shaped curve in the aggression graph. It means that in general, aggressive dogs, we think they are annoying, but also the not so aggressive dogs can be annoying because those are the dogs which bark high-pitched and clean voices. And what is with the sexes? Of course you could say sex counts. Men were much more annoyed in general by dog barks than women. And then let's go to the conclusions. What is the communicative relevance of barks? Why they become so annoying? Let's start with the high-pitched barks. In the case of the high-pitched barks, we can see the parallel with other biological sounds like baby cries, like cat mews, and of course, the obnoxious sirens. These are such sounds what you cannot habituate to, and these sounds make you want to intervene. These sounds in dog bark are typical for dogs in trouble. For example, we already heard about the separation anxiety. Left alone dog, dogs typically bark on a high-pitched, clean tone. So these sounds you cannot habituate to, you want to intervene, but you can't because it's the neighbor's dog, so you get nervous. What is with the fast, harsh, deep voices? These are resembling to the barks of the dog's ancestors, the, the wolves. These are resembling to the possibly original uh, function of dog barks. Warning, deterrence, call for fight. Again, a sound what we cannot ignore. We want to intervene, but we can't, so we become nervous. 
And what is with the sexes? Why women are less annoyed by dog barks than men? For example, because women might be more empathic with dogs. They get less stressed when they hear dogs. But men, in many studies, turn out to be much more intensively reacting to baby cries also. So maybe this is a similarity between men reacting to baby cries when they react to dog barks, also with higher emotions. And about closing thoughts, the ASPCA has a very nice, I couldn't tell nicer, so I rather uh, cite it from them, a very nice uh, thought about dog barking, which is basically talking about that dog barks, as they are communicative zones, can have many causes, many meanings. And to treat excessive barking, which can become nuisance, we have to find why the dog is barking. Why the dog is barking so much? Why the dog is barking on that particular voice? And of course, I could add to this thought that also very interesting would be to know that why particular people are more annoyed by dog barking than others. For example, we saw one possible case, the difference between men and women. And just a few more funny pictures, which firstly uh, emphasizes that there can be meaning in the annoying dog bark. Maybe the zombies are outside. And of course, uh, another, which can be also a warning how not to treat excessive dog barking, don't yell with the dog, because maybe it will be happy for its new barking companion. And uh, we are very proud to this new publication, which is the first which uh, examined uh, annoying nuisance barks from the biological aspect. We are very happy to have excellent Brazilian colleagues, Professor Tokumaru and a young colleague, Taisa Hines. And of course, thank you for the attention. Thank you very much for your talk.